In this video I get hands on with the brand new Grainfeather G70 on a brew day at the malt miller. I'll let you know what I thought of it and how the brew day went. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, smash it now. Daft Cat Brewing for Beer. Brewing and event videos. Let me start off by saying a huge thank you to both Malt Miller and the Grain Further for making this brew day happen. Full disclosure, I was not charged for this brew day. However, that has not influenced my opinion of the machine or the experience of brewing on it. Regular viewers will note this is a change in style from how I normally present my videos. However, in this instance, both the footage at BrewCon and also at Malt Miller was in a very noisy venue with music playing in the background so we had to remove that audio or it would have been removed from YouTube straight away. I got my first look at this brand new unit back in BrewCon in November last year where they were exhibiting and you can see the unit here. It looks very different to the original one. There's some nice little touches including the changes here. The elements completely enclosed under the bottom plate which has got very fine holes, which we'll talk about later on. If you then look under there, you'll see that it actually fits down into the base to stop stuff getting down to the pump outlet. And there's that is your pump filter. There's nothing to knock off like there is on the existing one. It's also very high grade. Everything's thick stainless. And as you can see, nice, easy to clean. Now we're looking inside the malt pipe. And again, lovely, smooth, bottom plates a lot stronger than in the original, as you'd expect, because it's a lot bigger capacity. And the feet have been seriously beefed up to also support the weight of that. Whilst the handles on the unit are sturdy, it's not advised to move it whilst full, but I was told that it would handle it. You can also see that the lifting rod has been beefed up and changed and redesigned with a winch hook, which is more or less a necessity for solo brewers. The chilling coil is a lot bigger as well. This is the outlet from the pump here so that you can actually recirculate with the lid on without a hole. There's a little tube there that blows, plugs in for recirculation so that you don't get extra oxidation and splashing. Included is an adapter for the top of the sight glass so that you can connect the pump outlet to flush it out and clean it. As you can see, it's surrounded with a metal shield which has got one opening in it so that you can read the levels. Okay, let's have a look at the recipe we're brewing today. We had to make some estimates on the equipment profile because there wasn't one out at the time. I didn't want to do a large volume, I wanted to do a high ABV beer. So as you can see, what we were looking at here is a very big imperial stout with a lot of ingredients. And this is based off a previous US medal winning stout. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a copy of it or see the recipe in more detail. When I arrived, Rob had the machine all set out ready for me. He had my 40 litres of strike water ready heated up to temperature and we were ready to get cracking. We mashed in, taking our time because it was a high ABV beer. We wanted to make sure we didn't have any efficiency issues caused by bad mashing in. So we took our time adding all three bags of grain with Rob very carefully stirring in between each addition. Once we were all mashed in, there was quite a thick mash. We took the little pipe out the middle to, that you use to stop grain falling down whilst you're mashing in put the top plate on. Now these top plates are a big improvement over previous machines and put a little filter cup on. This is an official grain feather product. You can use it on either the old, the new grain feathers or even on other all-in-one brewers. It just helps to filter some of the overflow material and stop extra grain getting down into the bottom of the boiler. I made sure that the malt pipe was settled in fully and the overflow was down to its lowest level and then attached the recirculation pipe. This is a lovely addition, it's nice, flexible and plugs in totally inside the boiler. We're now ready to start recirculating, turn the pump on 
and off we go. That was the brew dealt with for an hour. All it took now was a couple of pops back now and again just to make sure everything was still going smoothly whilst I had to browse around the warehouse at all the lovely brewing goodies that Rob's got there. There were so many pieces of equipment I didn't know I needed until I saw them on the shelf. With the mash over I removed the recirculation pipe and needed a hand to lift the malt pipe out as you can imagine at this point it was very heavy. Luckily the extended handle gives room for two people to hold on to it without trouble. The only issue was we nearly lifted the entire machine off the floor trying to remove the malt pipe. After removing that, I tried to find out the volume of wort left in the boiler. This brings me to one of my niggles with the machine. The shielded sight glass is lovely as long as you've got bright light directly on the front of the sight glass. If you've got no light directly on the front of it and light's coming from behind it, you can't read the level of the wart very well. It would be better if there was holes in both sides of the metal shroud to allow light to pass through. Whilst we were spurging, there was an awful lot of fine material stuck on top of the top plate, so I removed that to help let it spurge easier. Went through, added another 8 litres of spurge water on the top, a little at the time, trying to disturb the grain bed as little as possible. I started to ramp up for the boil and to see how long it would take I took photos at the start and end when we reached the boil. For 32 litres it took just over 37 minutes to get up to a boil, which was quite vigorous as you can see. What the boil would be like with 50, 60, 70 litres in there, I'm not sure, but it was certainly doing a brilliant job with 32. After the boil was over with the hop additions, it was time to chill. I recirculated back into the boiler for a little while first, just to get the bulk of the wart down under 80 degrees. Then took a gravity reading before running it off straight into the fermenter. As you can see, the machine was very solid. At this point though, I was just trying to disturb any fine material on the bottom plate as the pump was rather sluggish. Now, this turns out that we had a very thick layer of very fine material stuck on the bottom filter afterwards, but it wasn't, we weren't aware of that at the time. This was probably due to just how fine the holes are in the meshes on this machine. So if you have a slightly aggressive crush of your grain, then you will get fine material stick into the plate. The pump was still pokey enough to manage to recirculate okay, even if it was just a little bit sluggish. So that was it, brew day done. And what did I think of the machine? Overall, I was very impressed with the machine. A lot of thought and engineering has gone into it. Brewing on it is absolutely lovely. Setting up the Wi-Fi controller is amazing. It's sturdy. It's high quality and it's going to last you a lifetime. I mentioned a couple of the niggles I had which was just the sight glass and maybe the holes in the plates are just a tiny little bit too small, just a little bit bigger and the wart will be able to recirculate and take those fines which can get caught in the grain bed instead of on the plates. But that was it, yeah. I highly recommend it. Pricing information was not available at the time that I filmed this, but the machine is available now on pre-order. I suggest you go out and get it because if you need either high ABV or high volume, then this will certainly do the job. And it did well. It, it got me over 75% mash efficiency which is something I would never achieve on my normal machine for such a high ABV beer. Thank you very much once again to both Malt Miller and the Grain Further for making this happen. The beer is going to be a while before it's ready. It's going to be at least six months. I'll let you know how it comes out once it's ready. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching Daft Cat Brewing.